glory to God. In the sanctuary, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Haggai, chapter 2. We are still in this scripture. I haven't been able to get away from it yet. Which means we haven't got everything that we need yet. Amen? How many know God uh, can give you one scripture and, and every day give you something new out of that scripture? One scripture. Uh, I know of, of a minister that God spoke to him and told him to study uh, a specific uh, chapter in Psalms. And I, I want to, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I don't remember. Huh? I, I don't remember. But uh, he gave him a specific chapter. For some reason, Ag 85 keep coming out. I don't know. But that might have been the one God gave me, so I don't remember. But, uh, and for six months, he was in that chapter. Every day, God said, don't read anything but this. Just stay in this, stay in this, stay in this. And after six months, he, he kind of got bored. Anybody think you get bored? Six months, read the same chapter. And uh, some of you may be saying that about where we're at in Haggai. I don't know. But after six months, he, he, he was getting bored. And he's like, oh, God, I want some of the rest of the word. And, and so he... Uh, opened his Bible and he went over to the New Testament. You know, if we're in the Old Testament, most people want the New. Amen. And uh, because we're living in the New. We're living in the New. We're living under the New. But God didn't do away with the Old. Okay? And there's a lot in the Old. And so after six months, he said, you know, I want some New Testament. So he flipped over to the New Testament and just whatever he could turn to and as soon as he flipped, his eyes blurred. He couldn't see it. And he says, God, I don't understand. I want to read the word. And he said, I told you such and such a chapter. And he said, but God, I've been in it six months. He said, and you're going to stay in it until you get it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're going to stay in it until you get it. And I, and I believe that's a word for us today, that sometimes we're in a rush. Yeah. And we're hurrying to get somewhere. And uh, if you're not careful, you treat the Bible that way. You will read it in a rush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I got ten minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know sometimes that's what we do with ministers? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got 20 minutes because, you know... This thing went too long today. Uh, no, we can't do that with God, but yet we try to do that with God. And God told him, uh, you're not, you ain't got it yet, so go back. And so he went back and, and he began to read it again and read it again. And, and he said, God, I don't understand what you're trying to do. And he says, when you get it, it will become a part of you. Listen now. When you get it, when you get understanding of the Word of God, it will become a part of you. And when it becomes a part of you, it becomes you. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. In other words, I am the Lord that healeth thee. When it becomes a part of you, you can't help but be healed. Why? Because the Word is still becoming flesh today. We take the scripture and we put it for a time and a season and we miss sometimes what God is doing because we have put God in a box. Well, God did that back then. Yes, he did. But guess what? He's still alive today. He's still moving today. Ooh. I might have to run here. Man. Hallelujah. So the Word of God is alive, it is quick, it is powerful, it is ever moving, it is ever performing, it is ever doing what God has sent it to do. Yes. The Word. Whether we see it in our lifetime or not, is kind of dependent upon us. Because the Word of God is alive, and the Word of God wants to come alive in you. So today, if we go into the book of Haggai, chapter 2 again, the Word is trying to sink into the very depths of your being and come up and come alive. Amen. 
So today, allow the Holy Ghost to minister to you. Allow the Holy Ghost to speak to you some things that only the Holy Ghost can speak. Amen? Amen. 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 Haggai chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. If you'd like to stand with me. Glory to God. In the seventh month, boy, we can stop right there and shout. See, what, that's what I'm trying to tell you, is the Word of God is so rich and so full that there's so much in one word. One word. In the seventh month, the word seven means completeness and perfection. Yes, yes. Amen. In the month of completion and perfection. See, I told you we could, we could spend all day. In the seventh month, the month of completion and perfection, in the one and twentieth day of the month, which by the way was the last day of, the, of, of this particular feast, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? How do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I coveted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Father, that your word is so rich today and so full. And Lord, we do not want to be people who give give the, the Spirit of God a, a, a timetable. We want to allow you, Father, to do everything that you want to do, no matter what it is today. So, Father, we ask that the Word of God would come alive in this place. I ask, Father, that it would come off the pages that it was written in and that it would come up before us and bring revelation, bring understanding of what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Lord, that we may see beyond this natural realm and look into the things of the Spirit and see an all-powerful God. That we may see a God who is seated on the throne, high and lifted up, and His train is filling the temple. And you are moving in this day and in this hour. And you are doing great and mighty things. That we may have eyes to see you, Lord. Father, we give you praise for it. Yes. We give you praise. We give you thanks for it right now. For we say, Lord, let it be so here. Amen. Yes. Let it be so in this house, in our hearts, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our bodies, in this church, in our homes, in this city. Let it be so, Lord. Yes. We give you praise for it, Lord. Because we know that if we ask anything according to your word, it is done. So thank you, Jesus, for revelation. Thank you for eyes to see. Thank you for understanding, Lord, of the times and, and what you're doing right now in this day and in this hour. And thank you for your presence. We give you praise in this house and all the people said, Amen and amen. You can be seated. I'll be honest with you, I wanted to keep going. Just pray a while. Just pray a while. Why? Because the Lord's moving. The Lord is moving. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. The word of God uh, was very plain to the children of Israel. Yet, we read it and sometimes we don't understand it. And so, uh, we have to go over it and over it and over it. Amen. And this particular scripture now, we've been in at least four weeks now, maybe five. Uh, and some may be saying to me, Brother Dan, get over it. <laughs> well, we're going to get over it, but we're going to get over it when we get it. Amen. 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 And, and we won't finish today, I can tell you already. So there's no need me even attempting to uh, deceive or, or let you believe that I will finish because there's no way. Last week, we talked about the fact that he said Zerubbabel, Joshua, and the residue of the people were to be strong in the Lord. Yes. Amen. We talked the week before about be strong, meaning uh, find an identity in strength. Yes. Find identity in being strong, having the ability of God in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then, well, like I said last week, we talked about uh, he was telling Zerubbabel, which meant born of captivity. All of us were born in captivity. All of us were born in sin. So he's speaking to you and I. He said, be strong. Find your identity in the strength of God. Even though you came out of captivity, you're not captive any longer. Come on now. We came out of captivity. We came out of darkness. We came out of bondage. And we came into the light. We came into the freedom of the Holy Ghost. So, he, he told them, come out. You're no longer captive. Be strong. And then he said, uh, Joshua, which the original, original is talking about Jesus. So, Last week we talked about the fact that we were in captivity and now we find our identity in Christ. Come on. We used to identify with being bound. We used to identify with addictions. We used to identify with poverty. We used to identify with depression. Now we identify with Jesus Christ, the anointed one. We're no longer bound. We're no longer held down because he said be strong. Be strong. Find your identity in Christ. Amen. And we ended with this thought last week and that was where he said in verse 5, according to the word that I covenanted with you. According to the word that I coveted with you when you came out of Egypt. So we talked just briefly about the word of his covenant. And we ended with this thought and that is you have a word from God. You have a word from God. Wait a minute, you didn't you get it. I said you have a word from God. The, the original, if you were to go into the original of this, it says it this way. You have an utterance of agreement. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. You have an utterance of agreement. In other words, God has spoken to you and said he agrees. And if you will agree with him, you don't have to be bound any longer. Why? Because you have a word. Called an utterance. How many times have you heard the word of God? Listen to me now. I'm not talking about the preaching. You see, the preaching is good. We need the preaching. Amen. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be here today. The purpose of the preaching and the teaching is to help us grow in Christ and learn the word of God so that when God does speak to us, we'll recognize him. But you individually have an utterance. You heard him. By the way, looking around, everybody in here is born again. That's good and that's bad. It's good the fact that all of us are born again. But it's bad because we need to be reaching the lost. Amen. 
But the, the point to this is, everyone in here is born again. How did you get born again? You heard him. Amen. You had to hear him call you. Now, some of you heard his voice, and he called you by name. Yes. Some of you. Some of you, all you, you just, you, you just knew you were being drawn, drawn, drawn unto the altar, unto the experience of coming to know him. But many, I'm going to take my time over here, whether you like it or not. Many, after that initial experience with God, if they would be honest, when they started kind of pulling away, they would hear him call them again. I remember when I backslid, and I remember when God said, welcome home, son. Oh, I remember it like yesterday. Why? Because he ran to me with his arms wide open. Yes. He ran to me and he welcomed me in. Even though I was a miserable sinner, he ran to me and welcomed me in. And I heard his voice. Yes. And you've heard his voice before. He's given us a word of covenant. It is an agreement that God has made with the body of Christ. He's making an agreement. We sang about it this morning. We called it promises. He's given us promises that we can stand on. Why? Because if he said it, he'll do it. Yeah. Oh, but Brother Dan, I, you know, I, I've been around in church a long time now, and I've watched people die. Ouch. But we've got to get to the down to the uh, bare bones, so to speak. Because if you're not careful, the fact that brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so died when they and didn't get healed, you'll let that affect you. Yes. It will affect your faith level because, well, God knows they were a godly person. And if they didn't get healed, who am I? Mm -hmm. Come on. So the fact of the matter is, if we're not careful, we will live our lives off someone else's experience mm -hmm. and miss what God is trying to do in us. Amen. Whether they got healed or not is not the question. The question is, did God mean what he said? That's the question. Did God really mean what he said in the word of God? Because once we settle that, I can no longer look at brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. I can't look at all these that have gone on before me and say, well, they didn't get it. Who am I to think I'm going to get it? It is not about them. It's about me and God. It's about the Word of God and whether or not I'm going to stand upon the Word. God told the children of Israel, be strong. Find your identity in God. But then he told them what to be strong in. He said, because I gave you a word of a covenant when I took you out of Egypt. God gave you a word when he brought you out of darkness. Amen. He gave you a promise. That promise is, first and foremost, I will never leave you or forsake you. So when all hell is breaking loose, you don't have to worry about it. Yes. Hear me now. Look, I'm going to give you a little, uh, whether you know it or not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm totally off script right now. <laughs> I'm going to give you some help today. Because if you can learn this one thing, life will be real easy. How many want that? Yes. You, want, you want life to be easy, living for Jesus. Yes. Amen. Are you serious? Shout at you, brother. Yes. Okay. Yes. A couple of them. Uh, if, you, if you really want life to be easy, serving the Lord, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's really <coughs> simple. It's really simple. And that is rest in the Lord. Amen. See, we make things hard. We try to pray harder. We try to we'll fast. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll read our Bible more. We'll, we'll uh, try to witness more. We'll try to do all these things, and none of that helps any of that. Listen now. Yeah, you got to pray. You need to pray, but you might need to learn how to pray. 
<coughs> because some of the prayers that you may be doing are worthless prayers. Amen. Sorry, but I've got to be honest with you. Because if you're spending your time begging God, He ain't listening. God doesn't listen to beggars. Amen. He listens to His Word. God's word is not begging. Nowhere in the word does the word beg God to do anything. Nowhere. Jesus never begged God to do anything. He thanked God. Yes. He thanked him. Yes. Why? Because he knew he was going to do it because he said it in his word. Right. You said it, I believe it, it's done. You said it, I believe it, it's done. There's a rest in God. But as long as you're fighting in the battle, you're not at rest. As long as you've got your mind all tied up with everything that's going on and, and you're totally bombarded with the problem, you are not at rest and you will not have victory. Amen. Because victory only comes through Jesus. Amen. Victory only comes through Jesus. And Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor. Well, why did he say that? Because he knew we would. He knew we would labor because it's instinct to labor. It is an instinct to try to work out things for yourself. He said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Meaning, you got a lot on your shoulders. Anybody got some weight on you today? Come on. We need to be honest with ourselves. Because some of us are carrying some stuff we are not supposed to carry. We were never meant to carry the weight of the world. You were not meant to carry the weight of your family. Amen. Listen, you were not meant to carry the burdens that some people are piling on you. Amen. Never meant to carry it. But yet the body of Christ has been carrying things that they weren't supposed to carry for years. Well, you know, Brother Dan, we, we gotta, we, we, I'm called to be an intercessor, and so because I intercede, I carry. No. An intercessor doesn't carry he intercedes. In other words, he prays for God to move. He will pray until he sees the answer and then I rest. Doesn't carry it. And, and many of us have been carrying the weight of our family for years. Oh God, what can I do to get them saved? What, 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 what do I need to change? What do I need to pray different? Do I need to do something different? What do I do? Rest. Listen to me. Rest. You may have already done everything you need to do except rest. Because as long as you are not resting, you're trying to cause it to happen. You know we try to cause miracles to happen every day. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Why? Because, you know, the Bible says, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we even pray, like Brother Don was talking about this yesterday, we pray prayers a certain way, we're actually trying to get a miracle. We really are trying to get a miracle to happen because after all, he said lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So if I pray this way, <laughs> but that's how we do things. It's called religion. Religion. And whether we want to admit it or not, we all got it. All of us. We've got a dose of religion. Amen. Now listen, religion may have got you this far, but if you want to go on with God, religion has to go. Right. Yeah. Listen, I didn't totally knock all religion, because sometimes religion did get you to this point in your life. Right. Amen. Yes. It could have been a religious person that, that led you to the Lord. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. I didn't say they didn't love God, I said they were religious. And all, all of us have been religious. And because of our religion, we pray certain ways, we talk certain ways. Did you know, if you... Boy, I'm, I'm going to get back to the message. <laughs> Did you know that we have uh, our own language? Yes. Church folks, yes. we have our own language. You go out on the street and start talking. <laughs> and they don't know what in the world you're talking about. Seriously, they don't understand what, where, you're, where you're coming from. When you start talking, oh, you know, especially if we put the King James Version in. 
Without the King James. We, we talk religious talk. Some of that is so we fit in with each other. Some of that, some of that is so people will think, hey, I, I kind of understand. But the world doesn't understand a thing of what you're talking. We have our own language. We've become our own island into ourselves. And so because of it, the world's out there looking at us like a bunch of maniacs. You go up and try to talk to them and they're like, That's why Paul said, I am to all men, all things. Yeah. In other words, I don't come to them religiously. Yeah. I had to, Paul had to come to them where they were to get their attention. Yeah. But he had to talk in a way that they could understand him. Yes. So the church has got to mature a little. So that we can be what God wants us to be. And so we can talk the talk that he wants to talk through us. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. He gave us a word, an utterance. And, and that particular word may be different for each one of you, but yet it will all come back together. Because the words that God has spoken to me, he may not have spoken to you. But yet, there will be a commonality. Because they will all find their root in the Word of God. Amen. Whatever the utterance God spoke over you, it will find its root in the Word of God. If it doesn't, you need to throw it away quickly. Amen. 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 So God gave us a word of utterance. And last week, we talked about this, and that was the fact, I'm going to button this, this is buggy. Uh, that was the fact that uh, he has spoken over the United States of America. God has. Yes. God has spoken specifically about this country. He loves this country. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Even though this country has done some things that are not right in God, even though our, our, our government officials have done some things to pull us away from God, God still loves this country, and He's got a, a promise for this country. Amen. Yeah. He has promised a great move of God in the United States of America. Yeah. He's promised it. That's called an utterance. Yeah. It's an utterance of agreement. In other words, He has spoken. Now all you got to do is agree with it. He has spoken. All you have to do is say, I hear you, Lord, and I'm going to line up with that. Amen. Yeah. So, God has spoken over the United States of America, but he also spoke over this church. Yeah. Yeah. He has given specific words over this church, not once or twice either. Multiple words God has spoken over this church. Yeah. This church is meant to do something for God. Right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how many people have come and gone, the church is meant to do something for God. By the way, he spoke over your life as well. Amen. Wasn't that long ago uh, that Sister Lydia was in here, and I remember hearing her speak over the majority of you. Especially if you came to the uh, ministry training session. She spoke over you specific words from God concerning what God wants you to do. Oh, wait a minute. So that means you have an utterance. With an utterance, there comes a knowing. With an utterance, there comes a knowing. In other words, God has specifically spoken over you something you're supposed to know. So, if I know, then I can't be detoured. Right. Wait a minute. I don't think you got it. <laughs> I said, if I know, I got a word. Wait, let's back up. How many got a word? Yeah. Yeah. Raise your hands. Amen. So, everyone, look at, look at the hands. All over the building, everybody got a word. So, you got a word from God. How many remember that? Most, yeah, it was some of it. There you go. Some of it. Most of the hands went up, not all the hands. See, it's important to remember 
the word of the Lord. And if you don't remember that word, you need to get that word. Amen. Prayerfully, we got it recorded. We try to record every word. Okay? But you need to get that word because it is an utterance of agreement. In other words, God has spoken something over your life for you to agree with and to say, okay, God, I recognize you are speaking. I recognize you love me so much, you are speaking a word here that may be years down the road, but in order for that to happen, i got to start right here and agree. I've got words right now that God gave me over 25, 30 years ago that are just now coming to pass. Amen. Why? Because that's how long it took. First, for me to come in agreement. We sometimes think we're in agreement and we're not. You can say things with your mouth, but your heart be somewhere else. We pray for people like that, by the way. We pray and we say the right words, but our mind is somewhere else. We haven't checked out. We're like, oh God, please touch them. Just the fact that we are actually thinking that way, those prayers are worthless. We have a word of utterance, a, 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 an agreement that God has given us, and He wants us to come into agreement with the word that has been spoken over us. Wait a minute. Was it last week when He spoke over you, you will live and not die? Was that last week or the week before? I don't remember. So that's a word. A word of utterance. Sometimes God gives you a word and you don't know why he's giving you a word but you need it. There's something coming you're going to need it for. Amen. And so it's really important to come into agreement and say, God, I don't understand everything. But you said, you said, you said, you said, you said. God expects you to remind him of his word. Look it up. It's either Isaiah 41 or Isaiah 43. I don't remember which one. Verse 19. Put me in remembrance, therefore. Or well, maybe 42. It's one of those chapters. Put me in remembrance, he said. He did not forget the word. You do. So he wants us to remember the word of his covenant. So we can come into agreement with the word. And that word says, you were in bondage, now you're not. You were sick, now you're healed. You were poor, now you're prospering. You were small, now you're big. <laughs> Amen. We, oh boy, we have to agree with the word of God so God can perform that that he wants to perform. He has so much he wants to do, but he can't do it until we come into agreement. Yes. I'm going to say it again. Because the Bible said God watches over his word. word. Say it loud. Word. word. He watches over his word. He doesn't watch over your prayers. Right. Let me say it again. He's not watching over your prayer. Oh God, please do this. You might as well talk to Santa Claus. God's not in the wish list. He's not into that. He's into his word. Amen. He's always been into his word. He will always be into his word. He's never going to change because God doesn't change. And anybody who lines up with his word, he's going to follow. Listen to me. There are unbelievers who have lined up with the word of God and don't even know it. They have lined up with the Word of God, and because they lined up with the Word, the Word performs for them. Amen. And unbelievers are sitting there like, well, God, why can't I have lined up with His Word? Because He looks over His Word to perform it. Always. Always. So all i got to do is agree with the Word. Agree with the Word. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But yet we struggle to agree. Right. Amen. 
We do. See, this, this is where the rubber meets the road. You can be born again and still struggle. There are many ministers today that are probably in pulpits struggling with pornography. God forbid, but yet we know there, there is some truth in that. And it's not never was meant to be that way, but it does happen. And they love God. Listen to me. They love God. But they're still struggling. Yes. Yes. There's other believers in the church, whether well, even pastors, that struggle with fear. Yes. Fear. Oh, if I do this, I might lose half my congregation. That's fear. Uh, yeah. We got to do what God tells us to do, whether how, whether everybody leaves or not. Yes. See, I have to answer to God before I answer to you. I love you, uh, and I appreciate all of you, but I answer to him first. Yes. Amen. Just saying. And if I don't do what he tells me to do, then woe is me. That's right. Because if I'm afraid of what people will do based on what I do, I'm not looking at God. And I'm sure not resting. Yes. Right. We've all been there where things are going on and we get in, in, in a turmoil. In our minds, our minds just start running with, oh, what if, what if, what if. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, you know, what, 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 if, what if they cut off the money? All right. yeah. what, if I, what, if, what, if, what if my boss doesn't like me? All right. yeah. What if, what if, what if the doctor gives me a bad report? What if? He can give you a bad report till he falls over. But it doesn't change the word of God. Amen. And that's where the church has missed it. As we've allowed the reports of others, we've allowed the situations, the circumstances, to become the dictating factor of life. Amen. Instead of allowing God to lead us and to guide us into all truth and stand upon the word, stand, I don't know if you understand that, Stand really needs rest. It's hard to stand still. Most people won't stand still. I don't stand still very often. Most people won't stand still because they don't know how to rest. And they've got to constantly be moving and doing. They don't know how to rest. And even when they go to bed, they have trouble resting. Why? They can't shut their mind down. Because they are not resting in God. God has given you a word. It's a covenant. It's an agreement. That if you will agree with the word, life is good. Real good. I didn't say there would never be a problem. Listen, I never said the enemy won't attack. I never said that. We sang about it a while ago. He didn't say you ain't going to get rained on. Come on now. Some people love to rain. I call it spew. Yeah. Some people love to give it to you because they like seeing how it affects you. Yes. God wants you to rest in all things. Now listen. I'm trying to move on because I really want to get somewhere today, but I don't know. By the way, I put new shoes on. I told Brother uh, Reed yesterday, uh, we went out, I went out buying shoes, and I, I told him I didn't buy the shoes I wanted to buy because I was going to, if I wore those, I'd stand up here for six hours. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> they were so comfortable. I'm thinking about going back and getting them tomorrow. <laughs> I'm serious. But I did put new shoes on, so I don't know how long I can stay. We'll see. How many want to find out? We can actually stand on the word. We can stand on the word. We can find a rest in God where there's a peace. A literally a peace. In the middle of a storm. Think about the disciples in the boat. Out in the middle of the lake or the sea or whatever they were in. And the storm came up and it's rocking the boat. And it's filling it up with water. And they are panicking. They didn't have any peace. Some of you are in situations right now, by the way, I'm not in right now. Some of you are in situations right now where you're not.
my peace. I believe that God doesn't want us to do anything without peace. I honestly believe God does not want you to do anything in turmoil. Nothing. Look now, the storm will be raging around you, but you can have peace. Jesus had peace in the storm. And because he had peace, look now, I didn't say he got peace. He didn't get up and say, oh God, help me. So I can have peace. He didn't do that. He had peace. You may have to do something to get peace. Because whether we want to be honest or not, the storm sometimes knocks us for a little off target. Yes. You know what I mean. Like, we, we're on fire. We're on fire for God. And then all of a sudden, ah! <laughs> What's going on? And when that happens, listen, it's not always bad at all to freak out for a minute. But it's bad to stay in that. Yes. It's bad to stay in that attitude of, oh, woe is me. Yes. That's where it gets bad. We are to find rest in the middle of the storm. Right. You want to get out of your storm? The fastest way is find rest. Yeah. I'm telling you, that I'm really, I can't get away from this. This was not the message. <laughs> the fastest way to move on past your circumstance, past the problem, past all hell that has broke out against you, is have peace in the middle of it. Yes. Yeah. In other words, <clears throat> Jesus. Just give it to him and say, God, I, I don't know why this is happening. Because sometimes we don't. Right. I, I don't always understand what is going on through this, but it doesn't matter. I want to have peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to trust you right in the middle of the storm. And if you'll do that, a peace will just come over you. Yes. Right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. The situation didn't change. Listen. The situation didn't change. The people that were against you are still against you. All right. The people that didn't like you still don't like you. The bills that you had are still there. The doctor's report may still be there. But you got peace. And when you get peace in the middle of the storm, that peace will allow you to release the God that is within you. It's called faith. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. We allow the faith of God that is within us to actually come out of us and we start speaking differently and things begin to change because we now have stepped into the utterance of agreement. Because yes. he already gave us the word. Mm. Now we agree with it. Amen. Mm. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yes. I got to move on. That was last week's message. It has been prophesied over and over concerning a great move of God in America. Uh, there is, it's been prophesied concerning a great awakening that is on the horizon. And whether you know it or not, it's already beginning. Yes, whether you see it or not, it is beginning. Because this move of God is going to be different than all the moves of God that have ever came. Yes. Mm -hmm. This move of God is going to be totally different. It's not going to fit your mold. It's not going to fit the pattern. It's not going to be like Brownsville. It's not going to be like Azusa Street. It's not going to be like the, the, uh, 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 the, the uh, revival that took, uh, took place in the 40s when they were out in the fields. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be totally different than anything we've ever seen because God moves the way God wants to move. But yet we have a promise that he's going to move. We have a promise that God is going to bring a mighty revival to the United States of America. We have a promise that God is going to bring such a move. It's going to touch our families. It's going to touch our homes. It's going to touch our city. It's going to touch our community. It's going to touch our government. We have a promise. God is going to do it. Listen to me. I didn't say you were going to do it. We got a promise. The promise. Oh, how can I say this? The promise has always been the promise, with or without you. 
The promise has always been the promise, whether you believed or not. Because the Word of God is full of promises that most of the church doesn't believe. It's still a promise of God, whether you believe it or not. You see, there are many people who are going through things they don't have to really go through, but they're going through it because they don't know the Word of God. Amen. And they've read their Bible, but they don't understand how to stand on a promise. People come and go. People come and go in life. But the promises of God are forever. Amen. I'd rather have a promise than people any day. Amen. I would rather have a promise. Why? Because I can stand on the promises of God forever. Yes. 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 They will never waver. They will never teeter. They will never falter. They will always be sure and sound at all yes. times. A promise. Why? Because it's God. Whatever God says, He puts His name on. Whatever God says, He puts His name on. So if He gave you a word, He put His name on it. Wait a minute. If God put His name on it, what does that mean? That means if it doesn't come to pass, it's on Him. If it doesn't come to pass, it makes him look like a liar. And God does not lie. Amen. Oh. So in other words, if God can't lie, and he can't change, then if he said it, it's done. Amen. Oh, isn't that so simple? He can't lie, he can't change, so if he said it, all I got to do is just stand on it. So God spoke over the United States of America and he said, there's a great awakening coming to America. Great awakening. And everybody has been trying to figure out how's it going to happen? Is it going to be this way? Is it going to be that way? I, I already know it's going to be totally different than anything we've ever seen before. I honestly believe that God is raising up little pockets all across the United States right now. They are little firehouses. Little, let, me, let me rephrase that. They are little houses of fire. <laughs> they are little. In other words, they're probably small in number. They are places that the average person doesn't pay attention to. They are people that most people have forgotten. And out of that group, little group of people, there's a fire starting. A fire stirring, a fire stirring, a fire stirring, a fire stirring. And God, I believe, has one of those places at every state. I could be wrong, because he, he hasn't told me that. It's just a personal belief. I believe he has one of the, a, a, a church like that in every state, and there's a fire brewing in them, and it's churning in them, and it's churning in them, and they are about to explode with the fire of God. Yes. And it just be a handful of people. And because those people will believe the utterance of God. Because that little group of people are willing to say, God, you said. Yes. You remember, God, on December 23rd, you spoke and you said. Whatever they mm -hmm. I got one. It's in October. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. In Vicksburg. It was spoken over me and over you. And you weren't there. But it was spoken. And I stand on that word. Why? Because God didn't take his word back. If God took his word back, he's an Indian giver. He can't do it. Man does it. God does it. So God has given you a word, and therefore all you have to do is stand on the word. He has spoken over this church some great things to come. We've been called a revival center. We've been called the house of glory. Uh, we were called the house of kindness first. And, 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 and it, it just keeps growing. It's growing. And all we have to do is agree with the word. It's pretty simple. Well, how are we going to become the house of glory? That's his job. Listen to me. That's his job. I have to 
to be in agreement. I have to make myself available. I have to say, God, here I am. I don't know what you want me to do, but use me. Yes. And then anything he tells me to do, I have to do. Yes. And if I will do that, then I don't have to worry about how will this church become the house of glory. It will automatically happen because as I do what I'm supposed to do and you do what you're supposed to do and you do what you're supposed to do and we all are doing what we're supposed to do, we will become what God has spoken over us. We have already seen in the Spirit. You want to get up and preach? Maybe you can get to the message. <laughs> we have already seen in the Spirit where we're headed. We've already seen it. We have already seen that we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Why? Because the Word says it. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Jesus did it. We know we're going to do it. We've already seen where we're headed. Yeah. We may not yet have arrived, but I'm going to stand on the word anyway. Amen. Amen. I may not be everything I'm called to be. I may not yet have achieved what God has said that I'm supposed to achieve, but I'm going to stand on his word and I'm going to say, you said it, God. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. If we will stand on the word, and the word alone. He will perform it. But we've got to stand on his word. And we've got to come into a rest. I don't see Jesus getting all frustrated when they brought people to him to pray. And think about it. When they brought the demoniac, who, uh, uh, the, little, the boy, uh, who would throw himself in the fire and he would throw himself in the water and, and all these different things. Jesus didn't get worried at all. He was at peace. Yeah. The church, we get a little riled up. I'm just telling you, we get a little riled up when we start seeing people come in with great needs. Because yeah. we're like, oh God, you got to move. you got to move. They need to see you move. Come on, I'm talking to you right now. This is what we do in the body. Oh God, we need you to move. We got, we got to see you do something. And we start working ourselves up and working ourselves up instead of resting. Because you're not the miracle worker anyway. You're just going to be the vessel. That's all. You're going to be the vessel that gets to lay hands on someone. Or speak the word over them. And God does the miracle. God does the miracle. Why? Because he's watching over his word to perform it. We've been trying to cause it to happen. We've tried to cause revival to happen. We've tried to cause moves of God to happen. We've tried to cause healings to happen. We've tried, we've tried, we've tried. And we might as well face it, it didn't work. But we have the answer. It's a word of covenant. Can I move on? He has spoken a word of covenant over America. He has spoken a word of covenant over this church. But notice in verse 5, according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, God gave you a word the day you were born again. You may not have heard it, but he gave you a word. Wow. I don't, I don't, I don't want to stay there. we got to move. So my spirit remains among you. Oh, wait a minute. He gave you a word of covenant when you came out of bondage, when you came out of captivity, when you came out of sin, when you came out of depression, when you came out of addiction. He gave you a word of covenant. He gave you an utterance of agreement. You never have to go back. Amen. And then he says, my spirit remains. My spirit remains. My spirit remains. Did you earn it? Amen. You didn't do anything. You did absolutely nothing. The children of Israel, no matter what we want to say, those people needed help. They had a bondage mentality. After 400 and how many? Was it 30? Yeah, 430 years of bondage. They had a bondage mentality. They were born in bondage. They were born as slaves. 
All they knew was slavery. And because all they knew was slavery, they had this mindset of, I'm always going to be bound. And because of that, God still took them out. I gave you a word of utterance when you were like this. Some of you are there right now and God's speaking to you by the Spirit of God. Yes. Right now, you are still dealing with a, a bondage mentality, a captivity mentality, a poverty mentality, a depressed mentality. God knows that. He knows right where you're at. And right in the middle of it, He says, my spirit still remains. Yes. Yeah. My spirit still remains with you. Yes. Oh, we're well, right back to, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Right in the middle of your mess, he shows up. Amen. Right in the middle of it. Let's face it, because some of us have made some messes. Yes. Some of us have, have, have went our own way, done our own things, and, and because of it, we've really been in a mess. And he said, my spirit still remains. Amen. In other words, the word I spoke over you still uh, is in agreement today. It's still in existence. Even though you went that way, my word's still there. My word's still there. My word's still there. By the way, if you've ever been called of God, you're still called. Yes, hallelujah. If you've ever been called of God, you're still called even when you went the opposite direction. Yes. Yes. Jonah ran from God, but he couldn't get away. Right. You can't outrun God. Right. You're either called or you're not. And if you're called, you're called even when you're in sin. Yeah. Even when you're in sin, you're still called. Oh. My spirit still remains. And then the next words are, fear not. Fear not. Oh, isn't that something? Because God wants you to understand that you don't have to have any fear. No fear in the middle of the struggle. No fear in the middle of the problem. No fear whatsoever. Why? Because you got a word and his spirit. Amen. Yeah. I have the words, I have the utterance of God, and I have the spirit of God to back it up. Amen. Woo! Yeah. So because I have the word and because I have the spirit, I don't have to fear. The hope of Yazoo City is still the same today. The hope of Yazoo City is still the same. It is a word and a spirit. It is the word that God has spoken over Yazoo City, and he said, I'm pouring out my glory over this city. Amen. The word of God is, I'm driving darkness out of Yazoo City. Well, brother Ben, I, I don't see it. He didn't say believe it when you see it. Mm -hmm. right. He said, this is my word. Yes. My glory is driving out darkness. Yes. So we have the word and we also have the spirit because he walked in this place this morning. Yes. Yes. We felt him move yes. Yes. in this place. Yes. Listen to him. It's not about the feeling, but it sure is good when it happens. We got a word from God that He is going to move in Yazoo City, that He is going to save this city. So we got a word and we got a spirit, so why are we afraid? Fear not. Fear not. Let's move on. Well, I'm going to leave and get started. <laughs> Verse 6. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Yet once it is a little while. I don't know about you, but that little while is come. There's a shaking taking place right now in the heavens, yes. in the earth. Yes. You know there's earthquakes happening in places they've never happened before. Yes. It was prophesied, by the way, in the Bible yes. that these things would happen. 
So he said, yet once, in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens, I'm going to shake the earth, I'm going to shake the sea, I'm going to shake the dry land, I'm going to shake all nations. We are living in the greatest day ever to be alive. The heavens are shaking, the earth is shaking, the sea is shaking, everything that, that there is is shaking. All nations are shaking before God. Many nations right now, and for those who keep up with the news, by the way, I, I try not to, but those that are keeping up with the news, many nations are shaking in, in, in worry, fear of bellying up. In other words, financially, they can't make it. I'm talking about nations of the earth right now. They are struggling to stay afloat. So the Bible is being fulfilled before you. And if the Bible is being fulfilled before you, why wouldn't we believe? Oh. He said, I'm going to shake the heavens. And, and I don't know about you, but there, there is shaking going on in, in the church realm. There is shaking going on in the church. Because the Bible said he would start with the church. It's in the book of Hebrews. Yeah, once more I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. He's going to start with the church. And, and there is shaking going on because there's corruption in the church. Can I tell you it like it is? The church has got wicked. Oh boy. Damn, don't talk that way. I'm sorry, i got to tell you like it is. There are churches today with gay pastors. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's not of God. No. God did not ordain them. No. That's right. God did not set them up. He's against them. Yes. But yet there's churches that flock to a pastor who's gay. There are some weird things going on in the body, the so-called body of Christ. By the way, th that's not the body. That's right. It calls itself the body. But if you're in sin, you're not the body. I'm sorry. If you're in direct reproach to the Word of God, you're not in the body. So God is shaking the heavens. He's shaking that which is of the heavenly realm, which is supposed to be the church. We are heavenly. I said we're heavenly. You've been thinking earthly all your life, but you've been missing it because if once you were born again, you are of another place. You are of a heavenly realm, and you're supposed to have a heavenly mind. You're supposed to think heavenly thoughts. You're supposed to do heavenly things. Well, Dan, I think you're just a little excited. No, I believe the word. Yes, that's right. And he is shaking the heavenlies right now, yeah. and everything that is in this heavenly realm that's not of him is coming down. Yes. Yes. Right. Get ready. Get, uh, get ready. You're going to see things exposed. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to make you just sick to your stomach of some of the things that people have been doing in the church. So he's shaking the heavenlies, and then he's shaking the earth. Oh. Well, we already know that the earth is going through uh, these different tumultuous times, but he's also talking about earthly things. Governments are being shaken right now. Governments are being shaken. They don't know where to turn to. They don't know what, what is up and what is down. They don't know uh, if they should go left or if they should go right, because what worked yesterday doesn't work anymore. By the way, it doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican because they all don't know what they're doing. I'm just saying. You better be praying. You better be hearing from God because if you're not careful, you'll be deceived because you are one party or the other. Everything's being shaken. There, there are people today that believe that, that one or both of these uh, parties will be dissolved. Why? Because there's so much turmoil right now. I didn't prophesy that. 
I'm just saying there's turmoil in all of this governmental stuff right now. Why? Because everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Now notice, he is going to shake them, and the reason he is going to shake them is because everything has to be shaken. We, we pray for a move of God, but then we don't understand when God moves. Yeah. Right. We want God to do a miracle. We want God to save our loved ones. We want God to do something to the city and, and, and turn it around and all these things. But then when God moves, we're like, I don't understand. What is he doing? Because he's not going to do it the way you want him to do it. He is shaking everything. This city is being shaken. Yes. This city. Oh yeah. And your lives have been shaken as well. And if we will be honest with ourselves, we don't like it. Because with the shaking comes change. The church is changing. The church is changing. Because in order for God to move what we've been praying for, yes. we have to change. Yes. Because God knows He can't move the way we've been. Yes. He's taken us as far as He can. Oh, you don't get it. Yes. God is always ready to move. God is always ready to meet your need. He's always ready to do what you need him to do. But you have to change. You have to come to a point that you say, I don't care anymore. Whatever it takes, do it. Whatever it takes, God, for me to be able to get to the point that you can do what you promised you would do. Get me there. For you see, we have not arrived. We've experienced some wonderful moves of God. But no one in this building has yet arrived. We are all on a journey. And the journey is to get closer to God. With that journey comes some uncomfortableness. With that journey comes some things that God is telling us we have to do. And some of the things he's telling you is not the same as he's telling me. The reason for that is there are areas that have been holding me back that aren't holding you back. There are areas holding you back that are not holding me back. So therefore, he is shaking you a little bit different than he's shaking me. Right. Oh. And he is dealing with the very core issues in you that have to change for a little God. The question today is, do you really want it? How bad do you want God to move in your situation, in your home, in your job, in your family. How bad do you really want him to move? Enough that you're willing to say, I'll do whatever you need me to do, God. I'll change. I recognize I've been the problem. God gave you a word. He gave you his spirit. And then he said, don't be afraid, but I'm going to shake you. I gave you a word. I gave you my spirit. Now don't be afraid because I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. Stand with me. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is moving. such a way that by the way he is a he in case you don't know he is 
moving in such a way that he is challenging you to go somewhere you haven't went. To do something you haven't done. To become someone you have never been. I'm talking about the Spirit of the Lord. Because in this process, in order to get closer to God, you have to get rid of yourself. Listen. You have to get rid of yourself. Some of what was going on in here this morning when people had to take off running is you've got to get past yourself to do that. Listen, because pride doesn't want to run. Pride doesn't want to jump. Pride doesn't want to go to the altar. Pride doesn't want to pray out loud. Pride doesn't want to speak in tongues. Pride doesn't want to do anything but just stand there and look pretty. <laughs> it gives all the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> but God wants you to break out. 